Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here this morning. My name is Greg Ramirez. I am the Media Relations Coordinator with the Dallas Stars. Yesterday morning, Northland Properties, that's the parent company of the Dallas Stars, announced that they had finalized the acquisition of the Texas Stars, among other things. And to discuss those things are the three gentlemen to my left. To my immediate left is Rick McLaughlin. He's the president of the Texas Stars. He'll be able to answer any questions for you regarding the business operations of the team. In the middle is Jim Lights. That's the president of the Dallas Stars. He'll be speaking today on behalf of Mr. Gillardi and what this means for the long-term vision of hockey in Texas. And to his left is the mayor of Cedar Park. And of course, he can answer any questions for you guys regarding anything going on in the city and what this means for them. Jim Lights, will, Jim Lights and Matt Powell will each give an opening <coughs> statement, and then after that, we're going to open up uh, the room for questions. So without further ado, here's uh, Jim Lights. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming this morning. We, uh, all of us, really appreciate your attendance, and, and this is a very, very exciting day for us. On behalf of Tom Gillardi, his family, uh, our general manager, Jim Mill, Scott White, uh, assistant General Manager of the Dallas Stars and General Manager of the Texas Stars and all of our staff, I want to tell you how exciting a day this is for us. It's a bit ironic for me because in a prior stint as the president of the Dallas Stars, the, the idea and the, and the prospect of creating uh, a great arena in Cedar Park, Texas uh, took shape here in, in, in geez, about 2006. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to watch the building uh, come out of the ground. I wasn't with the team at the time. Um, but uh, when I returned to the Stars in 2011 with Tom Gillardi, um, I can tell you that one of the most exciting prospects was the ability for our, our enterprise to own and control our American Hockey League franchise in a city and in a building as dynamic and, and exciting as this one is and has become. We're thrilled to be here. Um, I can't tell you how important it was. It was, a, it was certainly an agenda item for Tom Gillardi when we started the franchise, which is to get full and complete control of the Texas Stars and the Cedar Park Entertainment Center. Um, it became, uh, it started to become a reality about 12 months ago when we had our first conversations with Mr. Hicks and his family over uh, acquiring the team. The Hicks have been great. I want to thank them. They've been really good, great stewards of this franchise. We've been really good partners. Uh, culminating in the uh, Calder Cup championship last year and having you know great seasons, two, two Calder Cup uh, finals uh, appearances over the course of, I think, five seasons, um, and really having just the ability to bring our players to such a great place, um, safe, fun, um, appropriate, I think, for, for, my, for, for certainly uh, minor leagues. It's a great training center. It's driving distance, as you guys know, from uh, home from Dallas for us. And we have what we think is, is the ultimate um, great situation for the drafting and developing players and getting them and, and really creating a Stanley Cup uh, uh, competing franchise in the National Hockey League. So we are thrilled to be here. It makes a lot of sense. We know all the people. Um, I can tell you that the fellow on my right is one of my closest friends and most respected business partners. I've ever had. Rick McLaughlin and I go back over 20 years uh, with the Dallas Stars. We, we arrived in Dallas within a month of each other in uh, 19, 1993. Um, and Rick has been my partner in, in crime any number of times in, in creating what we think is a really, really quality business operation. I couldn't be more thrilled that Ricky's agreed to stay on board with us and run this franchise and to keep it going. One of the most exciting things about this, by the way, is, is the quality of the people and the quality of the operation that already exists here. It's not like we have to come in and do much uh, and, and, do, and make a lot of changes. We really don't. We think the people here are great. We, we know the building is busy, getting busier all the time. Um, and it's, we don't see, you, you guys won't notice that we're here, we think. It'll, we'll do our best to be additive to the process, to hopefully uh, extend ourselves into the Texas business community a little deeper uh, and a little more, um, you know, in a little grander fashion, potentially, because of the combination of the Dallas business operation with that which is already here. But it's going to seem seamless to everyone. We think uh, the Gallardis are great people to work for. I've had that privilege for the last um, three years. And they've been nothing but um, 
that have done a great job with the employees and with the people in Dallas. So we're looking forward to extending that process. I also want to say that when I look out and, and see faces, the city managers, Matt, uh, Brenda, Phil, uh, the people that are, that are running Cedar Park, they're as professional as any, as any community uh, group of leaders could be. Um, they're a big reason why we're here. Uh, I told Tom when we first talked about this, we know the people there. There's great continuity in Cedar Park. They're forward thinking, they're forward looking. Um, they are, uh, uh, they're, they're business, uh, uh, business first, but they're, take, they're looking out for their constituents and I think it's a perfect marriage of our business operations to run the facility, develop the land around this building appropriately, get a Gallardi Hotel built in front of this building along with any number of other enterprises and to really make this kind of, this area hum. Not that it wouldn't anyway, but we, uh, we think that it's a, it's a really perfect marriage for us. Uh, Jim Neal wanted me to extend his, his uh, thoughts as well. Jim's with the team and we had a nice win in Vancouver last night, so they're, they're in Calgary today, getting ready for tomorrow night's game there. Um, and Jim did want me to extend his best to everyone here. You guys have seen Jim any number of times. He's the hardest working general manager in our business and he spends quite a bit of time uh, here in Cedar Park and looks forward to doing that in the future. So with that said, we'll open up to questions later, but I want to let Matt, I've done enough talking, let Matt uh, speak his piece. Well, thank you very much, Jim, and uh, good morning, everyone. When we uh, entered into this venture years ago after the voters approved uh, the concept of this place, we knew that the number one thing that we needed was a, a great partnership. We needed uh, people that knew how to operate a building and, and how to run a great team. And uh, we found that uh, with the Hicks family, with, uh, with uh, Hicks Cedar Park. And it was a great relationship. And uh, you know, before we go any further, I want to express uh, a, a great amount of gratitude uh, to the Hicks family, to everyone that was involved uh, in operating this place uh, up to this point. Cedar Park Center has been an amazing success. Uh, it is the crown jewel of this city. It's our largest asset, certainly. And, uh, and it's really changed a lot of perceptions about Cedar Park. We are now uh, a great home for uh, championship sports uh, and uh, and for great family entertainment. So you know, when, but we had always anticipated at some point that a, a sale uh, could take place uh, of the team and the, the operating rights for the building. And um, the way that this has taken place has been, uh, in in my opinion, ideal. Uh, as Jim alluded to, this is a relationship-driven business and. The people on the other side of the table here are people that are very known to us. The only the only person that wasn't known to us was uh, Tom Gallardi himself. And when Mr. Gallardi came into town uh, uh, earlier this year, and I got to visit with him, it was very clear that he understood the vision uh, not only for Cedar Park Center um, but for for the city. He has the interest and the ability to not only uh, operate uh, this building. Uh, and to, to maintain a very high quality uh, event, uh, event load here, including uh, great hockey. Um, but he also has the interest and ability to, to do the commercial development that, uh, that will be coming uh, around Cedar Park Center. It was, it was intended from the very beginning that this wasn't going to be a standalone facility, uh, but rather it was going to be an anchor uh, for retail and commercial and entertainment development. We've, We've kind of referred to this for a while as our entertainment district uh, in, in hopes that we would be able to have uh, the partner that can make that happen. And, and it's very clear that's where we are today. Um, and then with the other people that are involved, I mean, uh, all of you know Rick. Uh, we've, we've had a relationship since before this building opened. Uh, it's been high trust from the very beginning. Uh, it's been a wonderful relationship. Uh, and, and with Jim, uh, Jim was involved in the negotiations to get this building done in the first place. So with all of the, all of the people uh, they're known, uh, they're, they're trusted partners, and we went into this with a, a very high degree of confidence. Um, from the city standpoint, to, to have a great operator uh, is, is important. Uh, have a, 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 someone who knows how to develop uh, is, is certainly important, um, and having someone that understands our vision uh, is, is very important, and we, we've certainly got all three here. So um, uh, lastly, something that was important to us is even though we didn't have any, uh, any indication or really any concerns uh, about someday the team going elsewhere. Uh, to me, the, the fact that in this, in this new deal, they have uh, doubled the, uh, the commitment of the, the American Hockey League franchise being here. Um, it, what that says to us is that they're as confident in us uh, as we are in them. 
uh, and uh, we're, we're really, really pleased to be at this point today. Uh, uh, terrific hockey's and, uh, and this building uh, now have a very, very long future here in Cedar Park and uh, we're delighted in the partnership. So congratulations to both of you. Great. We're going to go ahead and open it up for questions now. Uh, if you will address the person directly, uh, I appreciate it. Jim, uh, what's your vision in regards to the uh, out parcels and how fast could we see ground being turned and things start popping up over there? Uh, well, um, I think, uh, Tom, we have spent, I think, days working with the city and its planners and the economic development people here on ideas and plans and thoughts on what to do. It's, a, it's an obviously an, an important uh, part of the process. I am not a real estate developer, you guys. Um, and, uh, but Scott Thompson, who runs the real estate division of Northland Properties, has spent several days working with the people here, finding the appropriate partners, um, and uh, laying the groundwork to get it done. I, I hate to venture to guess on timing, although, you know, um, the area is, is very ripe for development, we think, and, and I think that the, I, when they start pushing dirt, I don't know, I think it's gonna be, but the planning process has begun now that we closed on the, uh, on the real estate. Um, you know, it doesn't do us any good to leave it sitting there. Um, so I would think you'd start to see, you know, pretty good action on it in the next 12 months. We have a wonderful working relationship with a very, very successful long-term ECHL partner in Boise, Idaho. Um, we, you know, we're, we're biting off uh, the American Hockey League uh, deal. Um, I think that's going to be that's going to be it for us. Um, we, we, because you know Scott White came from uh, from the Steelheads in Idaho. We've done a nice job there. We've kept goaltenders there and, and, and players, and we bounce guys back and forth. I mean, it's not ideal. Uh, from a geographic point of view, but it, Boise is a really nice city, um, and uh, it's been a good place for, to, to grow there, and it's been stable for us. And I think the stability of, of, Boise, of Idaho, uh, Cedar Park, um, and, and Dallas is, is what we're looking for. So I don't anticipate going in that direction. Tom owns, uh, by the way, the Kamloops Blazers in the Western Hockey League, which is a story WHL franchise. And, I think he's got plenty of hockey. He's got now. He, he has to worry now about you know 250 games a year. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's plenty. <laughs> the sure does. I mean, we like that. I think you can be assured that there's going to be a presence of the Dallas Stars in Cedar Park every season. I mean, we're here. This is our building now. This is home for us. And um, I can't imagine a situation where we're not doing uh, events um, here to promote ourselves, the Texas Stars and the Dallas Stars, in the Austin market. It's one of the fastest growing markets in the United States. Couldn't be a better place for us to be. I hope fans start making the trip as we get more kind of a can, you know, closer with each other, that you guys start coming up to Dallas and, and watching the Stars and paying attention to us and vice versa. I also can't imagine a situation now. It used to be a bit of a difficult economic consideration to worry about, well, geez, who are you going to play? How are you going to do it? How do you compensate the stars to play a game in, in, in Dallas? Um, but we, we're thrilled at that prospect, and we're going to be looking at every opportunity to broaden and widen our appeal here of this franchise and our own throughout the state. You know, we're Texas's NHL franchise. We, we cut across five states. Five NBA markets are covered by the Dallas Stars television. And um, Austin sits right in the middle of that, Austin Cedar Park. So we want to make sure that we, yeah, that everybody in this market becomes a Dallas Stars fan. That's what's important to us. Jim, is there a commitment to keeping the Stars here in Cedar Park uh, beyond a certain amount of period of time? I believe that, that we just doubled the length of it. I think we've done a 10-year extension of our commitment to, the, to this building. I mean, we're not leaving. We're here. Um, the, Dallas, the Texas Stars will be playing as an affiliate of the Dallas Stars long after Jim Lights is no longer the seat. <laughs> Probably a lie. Um, but we're, uh, we're thrilled. We, we, part of our negotiation with the city to get this done was an extension of our lease agreement 
with the city. They've been very accommodating. Um, it's 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 the a the right thing to do. We wouldn't invest all this and and, and not extend our commitment. Um, and um, know this: we're going to be here, and the American Hockey League is going to be our team is going to be playing in this building. Uh, geez, and, you know, for a long, long time. Are you comfortable with the seating capacity, or would you like to see it expanded? No, it's great. No, it's great. It really is great, you guys. 1,600 people is a big building for the for, for our sport. Um, I'll tell you a cute story. Val Nachushkin, who's our Russian player, came down here and spent, before he had his surgery this year, he came down and we were trying to get him going. And, and Val spent four or five years here. And his English is a little choppy. But I saw him, I said, I, you know, Val, I was see a park. And he said to me, nicer building than any building in the KHL. But what I'm saying is this is a great, this is a great venue. Um, we hope to get a building like this built or help uh, get somebody to build a building like this in Houston because this is what the Houston needs, what the AHL needs is a really good franchise in Houston. And I'm kind of advocating and throwing that out there um, that we, we get a building like this built in some place in Houston so we have that really nice Houston, San Antonio, uh, Cedar Park uh, triangle that we have going because it's really good for development and I have to do that much travel um, and that's a really nice quick bus ride down there and I think that building would be really viable but this is a perfect building for us we love how it, uh, every time I walk in here I'm, I'm thrilled with it I've run and been associated with minor league uh, buildings in the past and this is as good as it gets. Well, we don't want the jerseys and the look to be identical, and we're still working on that, and we're not sure exactly when that's going to occur, although we, you know, we're, we're working on it. You can kind of assume that there's going to be a greater, closer synergy between the look and uh, our look, the Dallas Stars look, and the Texas Stars look. But we don't want it to be identical. We want to make everybody buy another jersey. You know? <laughs> we don't want you to get away with just buying one. Um, so, but, you know, we, we re Victory Green's been really important to the rebranding of our franchise. We think it looks great. We have the, we have these you guys, we've been voted the top five in the National Hockey League jerseys by, by fans and, and by purists, so we're really, really thrilled with it. Um, so we're working toward that goal. It won't be identical. We want the Texas Stars to have its own identity. At the same time, we, want, we don't want anybody to not think that, that they'll, they'll know that's our franchise when they, when they see the, the new look. But we're not sure exactly when it's coming. I think we're really excited about all the resources that Dallas uh, will bring to us and help us with, with our marketing, our corporate sales, even ticket sales. Uh, like Jim said, we're trying to use uh, their brand and market hockey throughout the whole corridor. And just like he wants some of our, our folks to go up to Dallas, we want some of the Dallas folks to come down here. Um, so yeah, it's, as an independent team in the past, we, we had to kind of rely on ourselves in the American Hockey League and, and maybe calling in a favor or two from Jim and Brad Alberts to you know, give us some uh, suggestions. But now we have a direct pipeline to Dallas and, and uh, we've got all those resources available and I can speak for our whole staff. We're really excited about that. I can tell you that you guys that we're already excited about the opportunity of, of selling into Dallas kind of based companies that do a lot of business here. They're thrilled, banks, autos, uh, retailers, others who have expressed in, uh, my partner Brad Alberts is here. Uh, Brad's a chief revenue officer of the Dallas Stars and his people are already, you know, we're, we're pitching and selling all the time and we anticipate adding staff here to help accomplish what uh, the goals that the Rick has set with the team and giving him the resources to, to move and to, and to get bigger better. Um, and you know, it, it's, Austin's a great market, you guys. Austin uh, Cedar Park is a, is a wonderful, growing, uh, vibrant, uh, you know, job creating, uh, kind of appropriate family value, great university. I mean, the, the diversity of the, of the business here is, is unique and great. And, you know, companies want to do business here. And, you know, when, they, when we can cross sell Dallas, uh, uh, the Dallas market and, and this market uh, together, it's, it's, it's a really positive. We, we are really excited about the business opportunities here. Is that something you can start right away? I know a lot of times you guys say this is the best place to start the season. Is that something you can start even at this point? 
you'll start to see it a little bit here and there. It'll take a little bit of time. Um, you know, we couldn't jump the gun. We, we, didn't, we couldn't put a lot of resources behind it until it was accomplished. But you know, we're out there, get it. And uh, you know, it's, it's media opportunity. Um, it's taking a look at every aspect of the things that we do, kind of broadening our approach and deal. You know, television is a potential here uh, to do some games on television, which we, we think we could accomplish over a little bit of time. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of broadening, you know, every aspect of what we do. We're looking at, but they've done a really good job of selling here. Like I said, they, this is a really good, this is a good financial statement from, from minor league franchise. Rick's done a great job here with his people and they've done a, you know, they've dug it out and went in and, and found it. And if anything, we're just looking to, to, uh, you know, append it, do a little more. Are there any other questions? Well, that's, all of that is, is good for, for the city. Um, uh, again, the, the original vision of, of Cedar Park Center w was to be a, an, an anchor for development uh, with, with, uh, with you know, many shopping or entertainment areas. You have to have that big anchor in place. And, and what better than Cedar Park Center with you know, 100, 150 events a year, uh, bringing, bringing crowds in. That's good for hotels. That's good for restaurants. Um, uh, there, we've talked about in the past there being opportunity for office space here because they can use parking during the day and then event parking at night. So there are a lot of synergies there. Um, uh, I'm also not a property development person, um, but in, in this role, I have heard from plenty of property people about things that they look for, uh, metrics that they look for to be successful. And I think we have a lot of them in, in place, not only with the building being here, but Cedar Park has been a really robust, vibrant uh, uh, business market. We've, we've had incredible growth. Uh, Population-wise, we're the fourth fastest growing city in the country. Um, this is a great place to do business. And, um, and, and I think that's, that's indicated when, when you have a, a company like Northland uh, and, and Tom Gallardi, uh, who, who have been so successful in business, when, when they see us as a good investment, uh, uh, we wear that as a badge of honor. Uh, the contract from the very beginning has anticipated uh, naming rights at, at some point. Uh, the city's really not involved with that at all. The, the only piece we put in it from the very beginning is it needs to have Cedar Park in the name somewhere. Um, but, uh, but that's all on, on their side. At some point that will happen. That's a, that's a good revenue stream uh, for them. Um, and uh, we're, uh, the most important thing to us is just to have a really successful building. And uh, no matter what it's called, uh, I'm going to have my season tickets here. Matt, you were on the council when this project was first getting started. Did you envision, or is this meeting your, uh, what you anticipated that this, granted it's just a cause in the overall economic development engine here at Cedar Park, but just in the short time that you and I have been here watching this thing, the growth around here, can you credit this facility to all this dynamic growth? Well, I think it. I, I think the building itself is a is an important piece of all the dynamic growth. But in terms of is the the building and, and the operation out here uh, meeting my expectation? It's really exceeding my expectations. Uh, we this was a very calculated risk. Um, again, we, we had a great partner and we knew that they knew what they were doing. Um, but we had we had done a lot of studies. We had looked at a lot of numbers, and uh, and it seemed like a really good bet. Um, what I, what I guess you, you can't anticipate at the beginning is how good is, are those relationships uh, going to be. And as I alluded to earlier, uh, you know, in the beginning of the relationship with Jim and then uh, uh, Rick and, and I and, and all of our city representatives uh, have had just a, a, an incredible uh, working relationship. We've gotten to know each other personally. Our wives know each other. I mean, it's, it's this good thing. And, and I think that's, that's indicated in, in the fact that when they – you know, came back and talked to us about the sale taking place, we were seeking to extend. I mean, if this wasn't going well, we'd say, all right, well, let's, let's kind of wind that down. Um, you know, on the contrary, we, we like where we are uh, in this relationship. Uh, we love how the building is performing. Uh, it, is a, it, is a, um, it has really become one of those things that the, the city has been, been known. When, when I talk about the perception uh, of, of Cedar Park, People don't really talk about sleepy bedroom community anymore. What's amazing is, um, and with things like the, the Texas Star success, and I was on 
Canadian TV making bets with with you know Canadian mayors on on the Calder Cup, uh, which I won by the way. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it raises the profile not only of the team and of the building, but of of the city itself. It's it's amazing when you go down to Houston and when they had the arrows for so long. Everyone in Houston that, that follows sports at all, they know where Cedar Park, Texas is because they know that's that's where the Houston Arrows were coming. And the same thing in San Antonio and, and in Dallas, we, you know, we, we get we get coverage there now. This has been a, a big deal for, for raising our brand and uh, we're, we're delighted to see it continue and, and expand uh, with this new partnership. Jim, there's another 14 financials and I believe 20 NHL. Can you tell me throughout the process, speaking to the NHL and the state and just any feedback from them? say tips um, you know we uh, I've known Dave a long time I've, I've had a 10-year stint as an as the president of a team that had an American Hockey League affiliate uh, with the Detroit Red Wings um, you know we're used to it we understand it the American Hockey League is the second greatest league in the world um, you know that I, I want to say 92 percent of NHL players come through the American Hockey League the fact that we can own and control it, meaning we don't have, but there were, our interests are always aligned. Travel, scheduling, um, you know, it's us now. There's no one else to look to. There's no, there, not that there were problems. I, I don't want to say that because that would be unfair to the, to the Hicks family. They've been really, really good stewards of the franchise. But to have it now, it's, it's all on us. It's on Jim Nill, Lindy Ruff, their staff, um, uh, Darryl, you know, uh, Derek Laxdahl's uh, staff here to do, you know, to do the right thing. But now we're one, there's no issues any longer. Rick needs something, he calls, we'll figure it out. Um, and that's a, that, it's just knowing that that's true is, is, is a real benefit. Um, and then knowing what you spend in players will come back to you in, in wins and development and other things is, is an important part of the process as well. And um, you know, we, it's the right thing to do and it's certainly long-term uh, Mr. Gillardi's vision for um, kind of developing hockey throughout the state. It's the right thing to do. Do you see this as a growing trend with the developments happening with the all NHL teams with the other NHL teams kind of seeing that steps on the process of doing the same thing? I think everybody would, would likes the process. The issue becomes one of geography, I think, and, and the, you know, the ability to have a building. But this is a perfect storm. This is in the right place. My vision when I got here in 1993 with the start originally was, was to develop our, our American hockey franchise inside our television market, which was first and foremost key. Um, then you've got, then you've got this great building in this great, you know, community where, you know, like I said, you know, it's, you talk to other teams, you know, they have to, they have, their, their players have to play in kind of tough, kind of eastern, northeastern cities that, you know, have issues. Um, and the, you know, minor league players don't make a lot of money. So you know, minor league players like playing here. We have no problem getting great veteran American Hockey League players to, to help teach our young guys how to do things right. And if I went through that list, you know what I'm talking about, uh, our captain. Um, you know, the, uh, Max Fortunas can play in just about anywhere. People love him. He's a great, great leader for young guys. But you know, everybody wants to play in, uh, in Cedar Park. I mean, it really is. The Texas Stars are a top franchise for veteran guys to play, and we're able to, to get, you know, really quality veteran players to play to help our young guys learn how to do it. And being able to control that process um, financially and otherwise is, is the right thing. So is it a trend? I think people like to do it. Some places just don't have the opportunity in our buildings and communities like this that are out there are close to other markets. So that's what's probably, you know, it's, it's an opportunity. Too bad for Vancouver. Uh, um, <laughs> what can I say? You know, uh, um, it's a good thing. I mean, and, and we've had we faced the opposite of this. We moved to that when we moved to Dallas. Our minor league team was in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Try that. Kalamazoo, Michigan is a is a drive to Chicago, three hour drive to Chicago, and then a flight. Um, after that, we were in, you know in Des Moines, Iowa, in Salt Lake City. Um, we had players in Peoria, Illinois. I mean, it, it, you know it's. 
Um, this is the best of situations. We're, we're happy to have it. We think it's an, a competitive advantage. And that's what this is all about, believe me. Tom Gillardy's mind, all he cares about is winning. And he wants to win. Uh, and he wants to win often and consistently. Um, and to, to do that, and this is Jim Nill's mop. Jim Nill has the second best situation. Um, Detroit and Grand Rapids, they don't own the franchise, but they work very closely with it, basically operate it. Coaches work for Detroit. Scouts are there all the time. Uh, my son is a scout for Detroit, and he is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, watching the HL, you know, midweek because uh, junior games aren't being played. So he's in Grand Rapids all the time. He lives in Detroit, goes to Grand Rapids. Um, our scouts live in Dallas. Our management guys live in Dallas. They're in Cedar Park. Um, and it's, you know, it's, I wish 35 was completed, um, undoubtedly. Um, it's not the easiest drive, but um, it's, it's one that makes sense for us. And, and it is an advantage, and we're thrilled with it.